there are many different ways to quantify the cost of living for families in Vermont. We often hear about the federal poverty level, but it's actually a national guideline used to determine eligibility for programs and services rather than a metric for poverty. In fact, eligibility for programs often uses 185% of the federal poverty level as a guideline rather than the actual federal poverty level. Another metric is the living wage calculator from MIT, which produces an estimate for every state in the country of the wage needed to meet a household's basic needs. This wage level does not include funds for savings, emergency expenses, or expenses like meals and restaurants. It also does not include potential benefits that families may access depending on their income. A family of four in Vermont would need an annual income of almost $110,000 to meet these basic needs. This chart also shows several additional metrics for a family of four living in Vermont. As you can see here, even the median household income does not meet the living wage, let alone the earnings from two adults working for minimum wage or families receiving the maximum reach up benefit. I also want to acknowledge that the living wage calculator does not account for the inflation of the past year. On average, between January 2021 and September 2022, Vermont households were paying 11% more per month for goods such as food, shelter, transportation, and energy due to inflation. This year's report includes a spotlight on housing and homelessness. During the past year, housing concerns, challenges, opportunities, and priorities arose at every level of the BBF network, necessitating both a deeper dive into the data and resulting in recommendations from the State Advisory Council. Our two guests will speak in a few minutes from their public and private roles about the housing crisis, but I do want to share a few key indicators to set the stage. There are many challenges with both availability and affordability of housing in the state. 32% of households in Vermont spend 30% or more of their income on housing. For renters, this burden is even higher at 50% of households. In addition, Vermont's rental vacancy of 2.4% was the lowest in the country. So finding any rental, let alone an affordable, desirable rental, can be extremely challenging for families. While homeownership provides a path to building financial assets for families and gives children a secure, stable housing situation, given the low homeowner, homeowner vacancy rate of 0.6%, paired with soaring interest rates, many Vermont families are finding homeownership increasingly out of reach. When we look to those who are unhoused, the impacts can be significant. The trauma of any period of homelessness, even short term, can have a major effect on future development. Children who experience homelessness may have significantly higher rates of emotional, behavioral, and both immediate and long-term health problems. Like metrics for the cost of living, there are multiple ways of defining homelessness and housing insecurity. The McKinney-Vento Homelessness Assistance Act defines homelessness and housing insecurity as lacking a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence, which includes sharing the housing of other persons, living in temporary housing, and places not designed for regular sleeping accommodation. Children and families meeting this definition are entitled to a number of services, resources, and supports from their local education agency. As you can see here, there has been a striking increase in the number of homeless children under nine enrolled in school. From 247 in the 2020-2021 school year to 398 in the 21-22 school year. Similarly, the January 2022 point in time count of those experiencing homelessness shows the number of people in households with children increased by 130% from pre-pandemic levels. 